Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's session hosted by SAR Education. My name is Diksha, and I will be your moderator for this event. We are happy to welcome all of you here to do, learn about use of maths manipulative in the foundational years. Today, we have Ms. Saira, who will be sharing her knowledge and experience with us during this session. Before we begin, I want to go over the session's ruling. We'll put everyone on mute except for our speakers to avoid any disruptions. We will disable the chat box, so please write down all your questions at the end, and there will be a 10 minutes of questionnaire session. Then we'll enable the chat for everyone. Please stay until the end. As we all know, there is a five minutes of assessment that must be completed in order for you to obtain your certificates for this webinar. We also want to make sure that you have an interactive session. So please don't hesitate to participate and ask questions. Few information I'd like, like to share with you all about our speakers. Ms. Zaira is a certified trained teachers in early year curriculum from Lambeth University of Teacher Training School, UK. She's a certified concept-based inquiry curriculum professional. She was recognized and awarded as the best international coordinator for embedded international dimensions in school curriculum for 2017-2020 and 2019-2021 by British Council. She was also awarded as a change maker under the empowering teacher category by, CE, by CED India in 2023. She has been associated with education for more than 18 years. I will now turn the rein over to you, Ms. Zaira. Thank you, Diksha. I hope everybody is able to hear me. Yes. Okay. So one thing that I want to encourage all educators over here principal, teachers, or any parent who is just the part of this session, I would like you to make the maths visual for the children. Hello, I'm Zahira Sheikh, an academic excellence, excellence manager and STEM coach. And today we all are going to look at the importance of visuals in maths and how beautiful and powerful these manipulatives are to building fluency and confidence among the children, right? We all have seen children memorizing the steps, right? And maths facts to solve multi-digit problems using a traditional way, or you can say the algorithm that looks very easy, but then you just change a little bit that question, they get lost they are not able to solve those problems. As per our assessment criteria, what we think that if a person, whether it's a child or any elder person also, if they are able to solve maths problem very fast and with accuracy, we think that he or she is fluent in maths, right? But, uh, but I, as for me, not is just for me, but if I take any example from our real life also, it's just not about maths or any subject, whether it's English or any language. If you just take any example from your own daily life, you will find that what are the things that you are fluent in, right? And what are the things that you're not fluent in? Just think one thing, one example. So here I would give my own example. If I say myself, I'm not at all a fluent chef. Although I can cook very fast, I cook delicious food, right? Um, I can read the recipe and uh, I, I can cook very fast and I know each and every ingredients in that particular recipe, but still I'm not that fluent chef who can, who can just modify the ingredients and who know that, okay, I, if I just change a little bit of this ingredient or if I just change that ingredients, I can make so much of tasty, tastier things out of this recipe. So it means if you want to have fluency in any activity, you should have the other components apart from the fast and accuracy in that. That is nothing but the flexibility. How flexible I am to thinking that uh, situation and solving that problem, 
right? Am I able to think that situation or connect that context with the knowledge that I've acquired by following some rules or any steps, right? Okay, so how that uh, flexibility we can develop among the learners while they are doing mathematics problem, right? So what happened when they see or they, uh, they just observe a number, that number does not give any visuals to them. If I say nine, I don't have anything much about talk about that number nine. But if I have a visual to say, visual to look at, I have a lot of things to talk about that number. So I'm not taking much time of your and I'm just going to hop my screen to another screen because I want you to visualize the things, not me all the time. So let me share my screen and I'll uh, just going to uh, talk about the usage of these manipulative and how we can change the abstract concepts of mathematics into a uh, concrete pictorial and abstract. So today I'm going to use a visual virtual manipulative side that is Methigon Polypad, right? The link for this site uh, will be shared in the chat box. So anyone can just use this site to explain or practice the mathematic uh, problem solving questions, right? So here you will see a lot of manipulative names have been uh, mentioned. Like I can just scroll down here. You will see that number bars. Number bars are nothing but the uh, the, the manipulative kit that we have given in pre-primary sections, that is number rods, right? Then number frames, this is nothing but the 10th frame that we have in our kit, right? Then we have number cards. Again, these are the part of our kit, manipulative kits, the number cards. And number lines are nothing but the representation of the counting beads that we use in our classroom, right? And then a lot of things are there, which we use and we have already provided in our uh, manipulative kits. So this site can be used by the teachers, parents, or the students to understand the mathematical concept and the visualization of the numbers, right? So if I say I was talking about a number, right? So I will take the example from number frame, that is number uh, 10 frames, okay? So I'm just going to tell you first of all, like, what is the number I'm talking about? It's nine, okay? If I just tell you nine, okay, yes. So if I write nine over here, so just a sec, yeah. So what do we have to say about this nine? I don't have anything to visualize. I do not have anything to talk about this number. I just say nine, there are nine fruits or there are nine toffees, there are nine chocolates, there are nine pencils, that's at all. After that, I'm not able to make any connection or any relation between the, 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 the number of this nine. I, I don't have any sense of this number. I cannot visualize this number, but if I use any manipulative and I'm going to use this tenth frame for this. So this tenth frame is nothing but a 10 frame, uh, 10 frames are there where each row has five frames. If we put the counters in that frame that the numbers are, that we can count the numbers. The empty frames represent nothing. But if we put the counters into it, it represents the nine numbers. So if I just fill this frames with counters, I am able to visualize my number nine, right? Okay. Now, this make number eight, and now this is nine. So I can say about this presentation that I have five dots on first row and four dots at the below, right? But if I just change the counter of this, it is quite clear to me now, okay, I have, still I have nine counters, but the combinations is different, right? I can tell you now this nine is nothing but the combination of seven and two. What make me say that? Uh, just because of this number, I am able to say that this nine has seven and two as its part, 
right? Again, if I change this color of this counter, I can again tell you, okay, this nine is again, I can decompose into four, five or four or six and three. Right. So now I have lot many things, lot many uh, explanation for this single number. Now I know that nine is just not nine. It can be represented as five and four, four or five, three and six, six and three. Right. Or I can say that, OK, nine is one less than 10 as well. If I put one more counters in this tense frame, I would be able to make turn this nine into 10. So see, see the power of visualization and the manipulative where the children are really experiencing that number. They're making sense of that number, right? Just memorizing the concept, just memorizing the steps doesn't make them uh, fluent in mathematics concepts, right? Once you will make them understand five and plus four makes nine. And after that, if you just ask them, okay, whenever you have to find nine, you can have uh, the bigger number in your mind and then count on the smaller number. That is a fixed process that we want our children to memorize. But if we have this kind of exercises in the class, which is nothing but the representation of single number in different combination, it gives them a clarity about a number. And from their memory, they can pull out the combination or information wherever they required right because when we want them to uh, like use these numbers in number operation they need to know how i can break a number into pieces or how i can regroup a number into tens and all right so what other activities we can do using this tense frame so first of all the representation of a single number using two different counters right so i can find out how many different parts I can break this number into. So I have already done it and I just want to share. Uh, I would share this screen with you. So you are you will be able to see clearly that how many different possibilities are there to represent nine for my children. So now there is not a single uh, part they can say, but they can talk about a lot of things, a lot of explanation for this, and they can compare also, like how this number representation of nine is different from this, right? And this can be represented or uh, through a picture or drawing using colorful strips like this. And this is nothing but the uh, visualization or the pictorial representation for the number rod. So this tense frame also can be replaced with this kit, this uh, number rod, where the child is able to pull together the two combinations, two number rods to make the whole. And this is nothing but the, uh, you can say the basic of the fraction that the child is going to learn in their coming years, right? So today I'm just uh, taking, talking about the foundational age, like uh, from K to two, how children are uh, like benefited with these uh, manipulative to build a maths uh, competency, right? So uh, this is nine, only number nine. So here it is also clear that how many different combinations they can make for a number right so this is one thing decomposing a number making part part representing a number into part part whole or making number bond or we can say this is nothing but the addition fact of all the addition fact of your number nine so uh this manipulative suppose if you are using in a uh like a group of 25 students, so you can divide the class into two groups and you can just give them few tense frame and ask them to work in group and represent the numbers. And once they are done with their representation, then they then pose questions to reason their combinations or their work that they have done. Do not leave the class as whatever you have instructed the students to do. And after that, just leave it by saying that, okay, you have done well or very good. But yes, after that, you must include a question like, how did you do that? Can you tell me more about the combination you made? And how your combinations are different from the other group as well, right? So I'm talking about these numbers, but we 
make sure by using this uh, process so that child can develop a sense of a number and they're going to use in addition form as, as well. Suppose now I want the child, I want my children to uh, do addition, add these numbers, right? So I have nine and seven. So what we have learned when we were children right student then our teacher used to say that uh, whatever the number you have just try to uh, memorize or keep the bigger number in your mind and count on your the smaller number that is again uh, just a, uh, a step that you want your children to memorize they are not going to use they are not going to become fluent if you just give them this instructions to follow you just ask them that they have already aware of the combination that they can make for nine and now they have to represent both the number and then let them think how differently they can represent this number so again they will pull down and fill this frames with counters to represent the number so i have this eight counters and now i have nine and very next tense frame, they have to have how many? Seven. So it's their choice how they want to represent. It's not hard and fast rule for them that they have to fill the upper uh, row with five and then the bottom with the four. It's not just not that. It's their choice how to do that. But yes, they must complete one row to move out to the next row. Right? Okay. So this is my nine and seven now they know when we have discussed or introduced the number using this tense frame they had a sense of this nine number that if they put one more counter it becomes 10 right so now they are very much uh like aware how they can make it 10 and they can make it as a 10 complete frames which is nothing but unitization right unitization is a process where uh, we teach students to count numbers in groups and how this is a very uh, essential part of your counting, right? So now I'm able to tell you that what is the number it becomes just because of this visual, right? I can say this is 10. Actually, I not need to count it one by one. So I just know that from my 10th frame, that first row has five and the second row has five altogether, it's 10. I not need to count it literally right so this is my 10 and this is my 6 so I can say that 9 plus 7 is nothing but 10 and 6 together it makes 16 right so how beautifully the child can group or uh, make a group of 10s right and this can be represented through other manipulative as well so when I'm going to use another manipulative so th that time also I'll share how this grouping and regrouping becomes very much important for them to solve problems with carryover or uh, like borrowing sums and all, right? Because they have a lot of questions when you ask them to carry one uh, number from right to left place value or just borrow from left to right. They have a lot of questions to that, right? And, and when we ask the students to solve any questions, we have a habit of asking answer. What is the answer of this, right? Can you just tell me the correct answer? But for the small children, especially for pre-primary and grade one, two teachers, if you put just this question instead of asking, what is the answer? If you ask them, what is the story? So if you ask this, what is the story? They start thinking for uh, object, number of objects for these abstract numbers, right? And when they have the visuals in their mind, they can represent the number very, very easily, right? And when you ask them, what is the story? Very next moment, you need to add one another question that is, what does it look like? Because when they are handling the concrete object, they must be able to represent in a pictorial form. It means they should be able to represent through pictures, right? So if I want to represent this tense frame uh, calculation in, in the form of picture, so how I'm expecting from my children to draw it? So I am expecting that they can draw it like I have this nine 
number of chocolates or number of toffees, whatever the story they can make, they can just represent it through a picture. This is nothing but bar model, maths model, or tape model, whatever model you just say, it's just give them an idea what I'm doing with these two different numbers, what I'm doing with these two different quantity, what I'm doing, I'm just pulling together, to uh, pulling them together. So nine and six, so I don't know what is the total, right? So I need to know the total. So if I need to know the total, the children need to understand that I have to put them together, right? So it is quite easier for them to explain what exactly the operation I'm following using my model. So I am just adding both the numbers. And in same way, if I'm just asking them the next question, so I have, nine toffees and seven toffees were eaten away right or taken away by my sibling so how many toffees are left with me so in that case again the child can just represent nine so this is my nine and how many I have taken away? Seven. So they have a clear understanding, a clarity about the visualization. So I have to take away seven from this nine. So I am left with how many counters in that particular 10 frame? So I have only two. So how I'm going to represent this uh, operation in my modeling, this uh, presentation? So I know I have a whole number like nine toffees and from that nine toffees uh, seven were taken away so i will represent this as seven and i don't know what is left with me so this this would be my representation for my this concrete operation or the presentation so this shows that I know the total that I have and there is some change whether it has been taken away or added into my hole so what is left behind what is extra from uh, there so that is how the child should be encouraged to represent that concrete operations or concrete manipulations that they are doing using this uh, modeling right Okay, so uh, this is how we can uh, do addition, subtraction, or uh, number representation for any number. And this is just not the end of the presentation. Even we can uh, ask them to compare the numbers as well as arrange the numbers in ascending and descending order. Right. So there are a lot of things we can do. Suppose again, I'm just taking one, one more examples from this use of this tense frame. Uh, subitizing. Subitizing is also one of the important and essential element of number sense when we are introducing number to the children, whether they are in uh, pre-primary or primary. Then the number should be introduced or subitized as per the level of the children. So if I ask my children, what number does this represent? Just a sec. Do not see there. Just tell me. Okay. Just look at this part and tell me what number these dots represent. So for that, I am expecting my child to give an answer without actually counting it, but my child is going to count one by one and then give you the answer. But subitizing is a, 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 a thing where the children can give you the number without actually counting it. But how I'm going to develop that skill among the children? So for that reason, we have to represent or we have to give the number in such a combination or such a group way where children are able to guess the number without counting them. So this is random presentation of a number. I'm not able to guess uh, instantly. I have to count all of them. But if I represent using this tense frame, it is quite easier for me to understand these are five. I'm not going to count for each and every counter. I'm just telling you five, right? This is called subitizing. If I just give you one more set of 
tenth frame, yeah. See, if I have another tenth frame like this, yeah. So I have how many are these? If I just uh, give you this visualization for a uh, fraction of second and then just remove this from your screen, then how will you just uh, tell me that how many uh, counters did you visualize? So you will make some connection what you have uh, seen on the screen that, okay, the first row had five and then again, extra at the bottom, it makes six. So here again, the next element the child is going to use from the number sense that is spatial sense. They are making sense of this space that the uh, this counters covers, right? So, and if you just ask the children to uh, tell you the number about this, they are also going to tell you, yes, it's four because they have a habit of seeing this number in die, right? They, they can see, they can make the sense of this space that, okay, two counters on the top and the two counters at the bottom all together, they make four, right? And see, this random uh, counters were not able to visualize or you can say the counted or guessed by the students. But if I place these counters in a in a uh, in a such a way, in a pattern where the child can make sense of this space, right? So if I present like this, right? And then ask them, what is the number? Can you subitize? So they, again, they can make sense of the spaces, the dots are kept, and they can tell you that I can see three dots as uh, like vertically, and then two, and then one, all together six. Or they can visualize that I can see three dots horizontally, and then above two, and then again one. So this is nothing but the visualization of the child or understanding of the child, how they are seeing this uh, dots, uh, the, pre uh, the presentation of this uh, dots, right? Suppose uh, if another child can say, I can visualize only four dots as I see in any dice and one extra at the bottom and one extra on the top. So how the flexibility is developing in my classroom when I'm posing questions, when we are talking about that number, we are not just covering the counting syllabus in my class. I'm just talking about the numbers with my students. So this will develop the flexibility in their thinking, right? Okay, so subitizing, counting, comparison, and then uh, arranging the numbers in ascending and descending order and finding the relation between two numbers, addition, subtraction, uh, and even we can use multiplication as well if we are able to, uh, like if we are using this tense frame in our uh, like grade one and two as well. So in that case, when we put more than one dots in one frame, suppose if I put one uh, five dots in one frame and uh, like five rows, uh, five uh, frames are covered with five, 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 it will be easier for them to use the memory that they have learned in their nursery or the KG that first row have five. And if one frame has five dots altogether, 25 dots, right? So this is how they're going to use the known information from their memories. They're not memorizing the step. They are understanding the concept and they are going to use these information when they are going to uh, do the uh, one step ahead problem, right? So till uh, for this manipulative, if you have any doubt or any question, so you can pose. Meanwhile, I'm just taking the screen to the other manipulatives. Anyone, if you want to uh, know more activity using this, tense frame, you can ask. Otherwise, I'll just move to the next. That is base 10 blocks, or you can say number tiles or cubes over here, or Dean's block as we have uh, given in the uh, manipulative kit, right? I can see one, any question? Okay. So, 
So in number, so, uh, first of all, I would... Zara ma'am, right. there's one yes. question. Yeah. There's one question in the chat box. Okay. Yeah. How should we add 20 plus 2? So in that case, the child need to understand that 20 means I have to use two complete frames just to say, right? Yeah. So they know that this is nothing but 20 means I have two full tense frame, right? Both the frames are filled with my 20 counters, right? Yes. So this is my 20, sorry. Okay, then to drag all the way down. Okay, take care, I'm just removing. Okay, 20 plus 2, right? So this is how they are going to write 20 first. And if I am, uh, if my children don't have the tense frame with them, they can just draw these circles the way I'm just uh, dragging these circles into the frames. The children can draw these circles in a uh, frame, right? This is my 20. Now, if the child has only two frames with them, they understand that I don't have more frames to uh, count the uh, counters or fill the counter. So they have to draw another one, right? And they know that until and unless we fill these frames with counters, I am not able to count anything. This is nothing but just the blank frames. There is no numbers. So now they know 22. 20 and 2 makes 22. And if you have uh, this uh, like answer in the class, next moment you need to ask, what is the story? So let them think that I have 20 toffees in my right pocket and two toffees in my le left pocket. Altogether, I have 22 toffees and again you ask them what is the model so they can say that 20 and 2 all together makes a whole that is 22 and then again you can ask how many tens and ones are there now this is quite easier for them to visualize the number of tens that they have and ones as an extra right so they can say i have two tens complete tens and two extras in it right and again if you want to ask few more questions of critical thinking you may ask okay what how many extras are there in uh, more than 20 to make it more than 20 how many extras are there there are two extras okay how many more do you need to make it 25 so they can easily tell you that i can see three empty frames on the top so if i fill with again three dots it will become 25 so it's quite easy for them to visualize a number to make them understand one more than the number or the one less than the number, right? How bigger this number is from the previous number or how smaller number is this from the upcoming number or the successor. So what are all these? These are nothing but the essential part of your number sense, elements of the number sense. When you are uh, having the counting, quantification in your class, do have this kind of questions, do have this kind of number talk to introduce the number and give them the visualization for sure. Okay. So shall I move the next slide? Okay. I hope I was able to solve your query, ma'am. Give you the answer correctly. Okay. Now, cubes and tiles. Okay. So now I'm just taking uh, this cube Okay, let me introduce first. If you are using this first time, so this is my smallest unit of uh, ten, base 10, that is unit block. And this is my tower of 10. This is nothing but the compilation of, you can say, the combination of all the 10 units blocked together in a tower. 
and this is my flat square of 100 units or you can say the uh, 10 towers of 10. So first of all, the child need to understand how these numbers are represented and how many uh, units or tens make these numbers, right? So this is what we are developing the flexibility of that particular number representations, right? And here, I would like to add one more important thing until and unless your child is like uh, proficient to understand and quantify the numbers, do not introduce the counters or abacus in the class because they are still learning and understanding the number. They are making sense of number, like they are understanding the quantification of number. But if you use abacus in place of this star, one as a one bead and again one unit for one bead they will not make any sense they, they won't be able to make any difference between these two different representations so it's my request to not introduce at least when your children are struggling or they are learning the quantification why see if i tell you this is one unit okay I'm okay with this. If I tell you this is 10, but until and unless I'm able to show you how this is 10, see, they can relate. This is unit block. And if I just make a tower of all these 10 units, it become your a tower of 10, right? So this is the important part of the combination and their visualization, which, which we should in, uh, encourage them to see and use in their quantification. So now see how beautifully I can show them that this 100 flat square 100 is nothing but the 10 towers of 10s. And if I break this into more tiny part, I can break it into 100 units. So this is how they have a clear picture about the numbers. Right. And it gives them the flexibility when you ask them, see, you don't have the bigger number to subtract, then you have to borrow from your hundreds place or tens place. And we ask them to write one over tens or hundred. It becomes very confusion for them. Ki, why I'm borrowing one? So this is how if they have a practice of representing a number in different combination and different representation, it will be easier for them to use that concept. Right. So I'll make, it, I'll make myself more clear with few examples, right? Few activities and examples. Okay, so I have one number, right? It's 68. Now I'm taking, uh, like considering grade one students where they need to represent a two digit number and they should have a clarity about tens and ones. Okay. So now I know that 68, which is nothing but six stars of tens. Okay. Four and then six. And I have eight. I have eight. So this is my 68. This is one of the representation that I can make from my known experience, right? I know that 60 means six stars. But if a child wants to represent in different combinations, they also can represent. So I'm the child who wants to represent 68 like this. Four towers of tens. And then I want to represent this 20 in units form. And again, this eight as a unit. Now I can say, just a sec. Okay. Uh, okay. Group and then copy. So one child represents 68 in the form of tens and ones. There are six tens and eight ones. And another child represents four towers of tens, four tens, and then 28 ones. So the child is able to see or visualize that number in two different combinations. 
right and both are correct i cannot say this is not right but very careful very next day the child will have a question ma'am how to represent it if i'm writing here just see the question from the child side that if i'm writing this is 6 10 6 and this is 8 so this is nothing but 68 but if i write for this how am i going to write this number 4 2 8 is that i'm going to write for this number so what what answer you're going to give at that moment because again if I'm asking them to visualize the numbers as a whole and write the digit for those numbers, so they are right. And at the same time, if my another child is representing the number in this combination, so what I am expecting from my child to write like this, or this is 20, so 4, 20, and 8, is that we're expecting? No. At that moment, we need to make their, them clear about the misconception that whenever we count a number or represent a number, it should be represented in groups. Wherever the possibility is there to make the group, you need to count those numbers into group. That is nothing but unitization of that number. So that moment you will say, can you make these 20 unit blocks into group? Yes, I can do. So do it and then represent, right? So this is how they will understand. So whatever the number I'm representing, it can be represented in smallest unit and the biggest unit. But if I'm watching that number at a particular uh, from, uh, frame or I'm writing that number uh, in a quantification form and representing with a symbol, so I have to make sure that the number has a group. That number should be counted in group. That's how the child understand if I need to uh, count a number from 1 to 10, I have uh, 10 groups. And if I'm counting from 1 to 100, though, I need to count the numbers in tens. So that is nothing but the benchmark numbers for the students to count a number in groups that is 5 or 10 or 100, right? And these are this is again the, another element, important element of number sense that they need to learn while you are introducing the number right? So see, this is the understanding or the memory that they are going to use when they are uh, doing the number operation. So this is my number representation. Now I'll show you how these knowledge the child will pull down from their memory to solve a addition or subtraction problem, right? So I'm taking this number only 68 and plus five, okay? So now I know that 68, okay? 68 is nothing but six tens and eight ones, okay? So for, so this is my 20 and again 20, 40 and then again my, 60 right i'll group them out here and drag from okay this is my 60 and i need to have eight so now i know from my uh, experience and uh, the practice that this 10 if i remove two from 10 it will become eight right and i'll represent this as 68. Now, how many more do I need to add? Five. Okay. So I'm bringing in five more counters here. Right. So this is my five. Now, the child need, child need to understand, I need to represent a number in groups. So if there is a possibility to make groups, so I have to first make groups and then count all together. So I know this is my eight. And if I pull uh, out two counters from here and group it into group it into 10, it will become one rod, right? One rod of 10. Now, how many, how many are there in all? So I can see that six stars and one ten stars, one stars of ten, all together, I have seven stars 
of tens and three. Altogether, I have answer is my 73, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is how I'm going to use my understanding of decomposing a number or making a making groups into right and suppose this is my addition sums right now i want them to solve a subtraction one right so i have 68 right and i want my children to subtract okay subtract nine okay right now if they have smaller number to subtract it's quite easy for them to just subtract your ones from the ones and tens from the tens but if you have bigger number at one's place than the smaller number in the uh, uh, number so you have to think how i'm going to do that so first of all again represent 68 So my 68 is this. Now I have to subtract 9. But I don't have 9 blocks over here. Oh, oh then what, what I need to do? I need to regroup any of these tens block. Okay. So I will just pull down, pull out one unit, one tens rod and split it into 8, 10. And I'll group it with this na 8. So now I have 18 ones or 18 unit blocks. Now it's quite easier for me to subtract nine out of these 18 blocks. So I can just strike out or just remove the counters. I can strike out or remove the counters. So I'm just striking it out. So eight, one, and then this two or two, four, five, and then six and seven and eight. Now. How many are left? So there are, I have five 10 towers, right? Towers of tens, that is 50. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I have 50, nine numbers. So this is the manipulation with the manipulative. They are handling the manipulative but if i want them to represent this uh, picture or this uh, operation so how i'm expecting my children to represent so again they have to uh, think over their own operations and they will find out so i had a whole number that was 68 but i took away nine out of it so this would be the representation for this question. And I don't know what is left with. So if I have this kind of representation, this is nothing but the part, part, whole, or the number bond, or the number facts, addition fact, the child has, learned in their previous classes so if i have the whole number with me and i know one of its part and the another part is not known to me it means i have to subtract the first number from the whole right so again this logic or this exercise they are pulling down from the previous understanding or the information they have learned while representing the number into different two combinations right okay this is addition subtraction so do you have any questions still here so that i can start with the multiplication division as well okay six stars of tens eight ones five ones seven tens and three ones okay yes yes Okay, so uh, these are the things where children get the uh, understanding about a number as well as the flexibility of thinking happens, right? They are just not following an algorithm. Okay, uh, you need to uh, count 
the smaller number on the number line on your finger or keep the bigger number in your mind. It's just not that. Whatever and whichever the strategy they are feeling is comfortable with them, they can do it. Here you see they can uh, use another strategy as well. If they have, see, 68 minus 9, they can make sense for this number, 68, where exactly this number is. This is less than 70. How many more you need to make it 70? Two, more two. So they can pull out two from nine or you can they can take extra two for the 68 and make 70. And now they're easily, they can subtract the nine or they can make easier for them to make these two once similar. Suppose 68, right? How many more do I need to make it 9? 69. I need 1. Right? Now it will become 69. Now it is quite easier for me to subtract 9 from this number. Isn't it? Right? So I will be. I have 60. But I have already taken 1, added 1 in my number. So I have to take out that number from this. So 60 minus 1, it's quite easy for me to subtract 1 from any number. So it's just 59. See, this strategy is nothing but uh, compensating. Compensation, you can say, taking 1 or giving 1 away right so this strategy can also develop if they have the clarity about the number the representation of them that number how they can manipulate those unit blocks or tens blocks into different groups and they can play with the numbers and they can come up with the answers there's not only one strategy to solve any question they have a lot of different strategies to solve and that's what we want our children to learn not just one algorithm one uh, uh, like uh, steps to follow but yes how differently they can do and this will happen if you have a lot of lot of manipulative usage in your math classes along with your number talk right along with the critical thinking questions that you put after they solve they come up with the questions and do not hesitate to appreciate the mistakes in your classroom if you have any mistake in your classroom any error in their questions do not uh, hesitate to talk about ask them to how they do it how they have worked that out what make them to solve that number like that so from their own mistake they will learn to rectify those mistakes right just let me clear this out and then i'll take the example of multiplication and division as well because most of the time, the students get a lot of confusion in uh, multiplication and division. And we do teach multiplication uh, and division from grade two, right? Single digit number, long division, we say, or just find out the quotient on the remainder, we do teach in grade two, right? So how we can use this manipulatives to teach them the concept of multiplication and division? They have learned it in their previous classes as group. Right. If I uh, if I would have asked my grade uh, senior KG student or grade one students, can you represent this number into different combinations? They could have shown me as like all the nine units or they could have shown me as group of. Two, right, they could have represented this number as like this. Right, see. This is again a decomposing a number into different combinations or different units, right? So see, one of the child children can have represented this 10 into two, two groups of two into five groups, right? I have five groups of two. This is what? This is counting in groups, but same time they are learning making groups and the basic concept of multiplication. So this knowledge they have already had from their nursery or KG. So now here, when I'm introducing multiplication in senior, like grade two, so I need, I need to ask them, what is the product for this number? Suppose I'm just giving them seven multiplied by three. So again, instead of just asking them what is the answer or what is the product, ask them what is the story, right? So they can tell you, okay, I have seven boxes and each box has 
three toffees into it. So how many toffees do I have in all? So this story, they should create, they should visualize these abstract number into form of any concrete object, right? So now I know seven groups are there and each group has how many blocks? It's three, okay? So let me represent this. How many groups? Seven groups, okay? So one, two, three. I'll make a copy out of it. And six. And I have another one, seven, right? And each group has how many blocks? Three, okay? So I need to copy this and represent this abstract numbers statement into visualization, right? Visually, I'm representing these number statement, right? So this is how, okay, copy, yep. Okay, and then again, next, copy. Oh, I made one extra group. So I'll just remove this two blocks from here and just see how many are there in all, right? So now this is easier for them to count. So three, there are seven groups with three uh, object in each group. Maybe at this moment, they are not able to count all. They have already placed all the cubes in form, but maybe they are not able to count it properly because we have already told them that whenever you are going to represent any number, you need to make the unit, unitization should be done. So now they have to make a sense out of it. Okay, I have 21 unit blocks, but how I can represent this 21 unit blocks into groups and extras. So they know that 10 unit blocks makes one tower of 10. So they can represent this 21 into two tenths tower of tens with and one extra. So they can visualize the same product in two different ways. And this is nothing but the basic of array representation that they're going to use in their third, third onwards when they're going to use these uh, present representation to show how they can uh, uh, multiply two digit or three digit or multi digit numbers in a form of array or your uh, area model that we are going to talk about tomorrow. Right? Okay. So this is how I'm teaching them multiplication using the manipulative. Now I can teach them division as well using this uh, manipulative. So if I just flip the question, yeah. So I know my product is 21, right? Okay. Yes. But if I just change, the question that I know the product, right? But I don't know, and I know the a number of groups as well, but I don't know how many objects are there in that group. How, I don't know what is the group size, right? So again, how I'm going to represent that? So just let me reduce it, okay, delete. So I have 21. This is my representation for 21, right? Now, I need to divide these 21 blocks into seven equal groups, right? I have to represent this into seven equal groups. So now I need to regroup this tense. I cannot break it without regrouping this to a 20. So I need to regroup it. So I have to regroup, split this number. Just a sec. Okay. So I'll just regroup, split this into ones, right? So now I can make first seven, three, four, five, right? Six and seven, right? So I can make seven. Now I know that I need to divide rest of these uh, unit blocks or tens block into this seven groups to making it equally divided, right? So I'm just putting one by one 
the blocks here okay i don't know what is the size of each your uh, uh, group is right i don't know the size but i need to know that so i'm just again i don't have unit blocks so i need to again regroup it and i need to arrange this what exactly i'm doing what strategy i'm using i'm just trying to give away the numbers or the blocks from the whole right i'm just subtracting right to see the strategy i'm using i'm just subtracting the blocks from the whole to divide or the share these numbers equally right see so now i can see oh oh so i have seven groups and each group size is of three unit blocks so i can write here three right so see how impactful these representation visual representation is where the child is able to visualize and see these numbers these abstract numbers right so once you get the answers you should not uh, like uh, forget to ask or add this question how did you do that what is the strategy that you used to get the answer and what is the story of your number statement do not forget to add this questions when you are you really want your children to be fluent in their mathematics problems uh, solving questions right so any questions still here uh, which part you want me to uh, explain more hema ma'am could you please elaborate Uh, this multiplication or division division okay so i'm going to take another example and this time i'm going to take long division okay this is the uh, basic of my uh, division when my child is uh, learning to share equally by using the strategy sub repeated subtraction right so now i want my child to be proficient in long division okay so i have 15 which should be equally divided or shared among two groups okay now what we have learned from our own experiences that if i have smaller digit so i need to take the bigger digit okay that's what we have learned and that's what we follow right but we forget when we are talking about the number the value of this number but not the digit this is 15 this is not at all one if i'm going to represent this 15 how i'm going to represent i'm going to represent like this this is my 10 and this is my 5 right and then 5 right so visually i'm able to see that 15 this 10 is always bigger than than 2 then why should i take the other digit 5 as well why i we, we fail to give this reason to the children right because if i have one tower in the place of tens place i'm not able to divide this 10 tower until and unless i regroup into ones see if i regroup into ones so what number do i have now i have 10 unit towers 10 unit blocks and 5 unit blocks all together i have 15 unit blocks this is how we consider 1 and 5 this is not 1 and 5 but 10 and 5 together 15 ones so we consider that we need to uh, divide this 15 into two groups and this is not 15 this is 15 unit blocks so when i can see 15 unit blocks now again i will use the uh, my uh, known knowledge that i can divide or share any number into small groups by taking away one by one or two by two blocks from that whole so again i'm just pulling out the uh, unit blocks in how many groups do i need to divide two so i had just made two different uh groups and i'm just 
removing or taking away unit blocks in groups of two from each of this, right? Because I don't know. I need to know what exactly the group size is. I don't know. So I'm just using my uh, like knowledge or understanding from my previous class that my teacher told me that when you have to sh uh, share equal share, you need to subtract from the whole equally. So now I can see that each group has how many blocks? Seven, right? Each group has seven. So I can write seven on the top. That would be my quotient. But be careful while writing the number. I'm not uh, dividing or sharing this 15 uh, units into tens. It's ones. So I have seven ones. So we have a habit of writing uh, tens and ones. So we should be careful writing these digits, what exactly this means. It means I have seven unit blocks in each group. So I have altogether 14. And, but I can see that I have one extra unit block. This is nothing but my remainder. Now this is very much clear to me how and why I need to take this 15 altogether, right? And how this 110 can uh, is regrouped into ones and why I need to take both the digit to divide by two, right? So any other question? Three digit, okay? You want me to explain three digit, but I don't think so. Grade two have three digit questions. They have only two digit number. Never mind. Can we take it tomorrow? Three digit number, multi digit numbers, because tomorrow we are also going to have uh, the session for the preparatory level. This is for grade uh, foundational level, like from K to two. So we can discuss that uh, in tomorrow's sessions. Apart from that, any other thing you want me to share? Diksha, is there any other question? No, ma'am, I don't think so. Uh, but yeah. we can wait for two minutes. Sure, sure, sure. So I had these uh, questions uh, like practiced, you can say, uh, like we can use this to explain the students for the two digit addition as well, or the one missing number, how I'm going to identify or uh, find out the missing number in my addition sentence. I have not yet started the subtraction, but yes, from uh, uh, like if I really want my children to be fluent in math, so they should be able to flexible in thinking, they should be able to identify the change in that addition sentence or it just not that I have just learned to add both the numbers only. But if my children are learning addition, they should learn how differently I can add or I can find the components of the uh, like addent of a sum or how I can find out the change in a sum. That is also important part, right? Okay. Zara ma'am, there's one question from uh, Silky Nagrat. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's asking, manipulators are really wonderful, but kindly tell, uh, tell how can we indulge the whole class in these manipulatives along with the worksheet in one or two periods a day? So uh, it's, it's my suggestion, ma'am, when you have, like, uh, you conduct one in, uh, introduction First, initial stages should be taken with the manipulative. When the students are able to visualize or understand the concept of that number process or whether, whether you are teaching addition, subtraction or quantification, whatever. First, if the children are able to 
see that number in different contexts and they are able to manipulate that number well fluently then you can just ask them to solve the questions from the worksheets it will be easier for them to solve independently you not need to focus on you not need to make them uh, solve the questions and uh, spare your classroom time it's not that if they are fluent if they are flexible in thinking they are going to solve by themselves you not need to worry about that so first suppose you have to plan your lessons if i am going to have a multiplication in my classroom uh, in grade 2 and it has five to six concepts to talk about right and then so take one one concept at a time and then they just uh, let them handle those number operations with the manipulative first and represent using the pictures and when they are comfortable then give them the worksheets if you give them in between the worksheets you think ke ek part kar liya and then just do the worksheets no let them understand the concept properly and then introduce the worksheets it will not consume much of your time right i'm not talking about just multiplication so multiplication have three different layers to teach right so first of all they need to find, find the product and the next one is the multiplier and the third one is the multiplicand when they are able to find all these things by themselves visualize themselves then you can just see uh, give them the worksheet to solve see in ncf document is also one thing is mentioned that releasing the responsibility to the children right so first of all if you find that your children's level is not that level where they can uh, visualize these numbers in different combinations so you take uh, the first step and demonstrate them how you can represent a number in different compositions right combinations and once they understand that combinations then then give them to different numbers to identify or represent or compare and then introduce the uh, number operation to them right so this is what first stage should be i do you watch or you see right yeah you observe and the second stage should be we both or we all together do right and the third part is now you do i watch i observe i assess i assist that should be your last uh, part right so ma'am i don't think there are more questions for you yeah so can we start with the uh, assessment questions assessment yes uh okay so we will now conduct our uh, assessment round but before that i want to say thank you so much ma'am for such a wonderful session uh you provided such a lovely response to each question okay i can uh, sorry to interrupt diksha i can see ruhin hasan has a question any trick to solve world problems so again i uh, would mention over here please do not uh, search for a trick but yes for a uh, for a strategy where the children can use their own trick right so yes how to solve the world problems we do have that strategies and tools also to teach the students but not today it won't be possible for to have all everything in one day but yes sure and we are going to come up with another webinar where we are going to talk about the word problem statement sums as well thank you